Welcome innovative teachers. This is the time of year where teacher burnout is real. The days are getting warmer, the kids are getting antsy, and state testing is looming. How can you get through the burnout hump and use STEM as a way out? We will talk about our experiences and ideas to keep you motivated and have a great rest of the school year. Also to help with your burnout and inspiration, be sure to join our Patreon membership for bonus content and resources for only $5 a month. Yeah, $5. You get everything upcoming as well as everything from prior months. So we started this about six months ago and you get all of that stuff and future stuff. It is such a great deal and the perfect teacher price point. Two resources, two videos explaining how to use those resources and an email signature badge every single month. So stay tuned for a great episode full of lots of STEM information to help with your burnout and be inspired. We can't wait to learn and grow with you. All right, we can get started. I'm going to be honest, usually like I read the intro, even if I don't do it and I didn't that time, you, you nailed that. And that was really good. Yeah. I like, I like how you use the word loom. That was good word choice. Loom. <laughs> yeah, loom. I was like, that was a really good word choice. Like when you said it, I was like, Ooh, and honestly sitting here right now, I, I feel this episode and I feel like that's why we're recording it at the time we're recording it. It is like March, which is not going to get released till April, but even teacher burnout during that times. Yeah. And I'm like the week before spring break. So it's like, it's hard. And this is the time of year where we were like talking before, like, you're like, oh my gosh, like what's going to get me through this? You're feeling like maybe I should do something else. Maybe something not, you know, not that I've done in the past and stuff. So we're going to kind of talk about how to avoid teacher burnout, kind of the innovation edition, I would say. And yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah. And I, and I think that's how we can approach that. And I think that's what good teachers try to do. And I think when you hear it from other teachers that, you know, like, wow, like they're trying this too. That makes me feel better that I'm trying that too. And maybe it'll work because personally, I know like my second year when I was writing on my own STEM curriculum, K through six, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. This is so much time. <laughs> I feel burnout. And for me, you know, doing the podcast, doing the teacher pay teacher, speaking at conferences and doing that stuff, which we'll talk more about, but like that stuff for me right away, I was like, bam, like that made me feel like less burnout. I mean, right now I feel burned out with like my business and everything, but that's fine because the number one tip I have on the paper to the side is take a day. Yeah. And I know we've talked and not all districts, I guess, are like this, but I think majority your like our days are general leave days. And you said yours are the same way, right? Like they you can are, but they used to be separate. That's how ours used to be separate. And then they're like, people are just going to lie and say they're sick when they're not. So we might as well leave them. And I think that's better for teacher health, like teacher mental health everything because like every year I take off March Madness with my friends they take off we get together we watch the games um I even told my wife when we got married I'm like this is something I do every year and she was like that's fine like that's cool and, she, and she's like that's nice because that gives you a break that's like you taking a day and I think teachers need to realize that so if there's something that like excites you or something where you're like you know my friends do this or my parent my mom wants me to do this with them or my dad do it take a day take a day to just do something completely different and you'll be shocked at how much better you feel just from one day being away like I think it's it's baffling to me when I take like a day because I've done it for other days too and I'm like wow like I kind of want to go back to school on Monday because I didn't think about it I didn't open my computer I didn't turn on my email it was just like me doing something completely different out of my wheelhouse and now I'm like okay now I feel like I can, you know, be a better teacher. I'm going to pour more of myself into it. It's kind of a way I feel like to find your passion again. So I got to ask you, I, you, I know you said you've taken a day before. What, what do you take a day to do? Cause I kind of said the guy version. So you probably want to say the girl version. <laughs> version. Um, I usually will either get a pedicure or a massage. <laughs> that right there. See that, that sounds nice to me too. And I, I know my wife does I it. I can do it for, too. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's trying to get me to do it over spring break. And I'm like, I'll do it. But like, I just can't have my, my close buddies yeah. find out. Cause they're definitely going to tease me a little bit, yeah. but that's okay. I mean, I understand. I'm not, I'm not going to be like upset. Like I'm an adult. I'll be like, that's fine. Like make fun of well, me. I'll typically do that. I'll schedule that. And then, um, before I had my dog, cause I love spending time with him at home, but before I, or I could still do this, um, is go to a coffee shop and I'll read a book. Ooh, so that I sounds relaxing. A chair and I read a, not mm. a professional book 
and then go to my appointment. Maybe I'll go to the library <laughs> and go get more books. Um, we're going to, we're going to have to like make a post on Instagram to see what people like to do when they, in their free, like when you take a day, a mental day, a day for yourself, what do yeah. you like to do? I think this is an interesting question because like yeah. things that are like relaxing to people aren't relaxing to others, which mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. Cause I know like my wife, she wants to do a spa day yeah. here during spring break. And I was like, you can do that. And she's like, well, what are you going to do that day? And I was like, well, my dad asked me to help him pour concrete. I was like, that kind of sounded fun. She's like, what? That sounds terrible. I'm like, I don't know. It's just different than what I do at work. So for me, that sounds fun. So I don't know. I think take a day is number one. If you're listening to this episode and you're like, out of all the tips, like if you just stop, I mean, don't stop listening now because there's other great tips, but this, that would be my number one. That's the one that makes me feel the best, I would say. Me too. And so my next one would be, and we kind of talked about this beforehand and Naomi will kind of touch on this too a little bit, but do something maybe you're passionate about. I know like right now, me and my students, we're doing a lot of like March Madness things. We live in Indiana. So all the March Madness stuff, if you don't know a lot about it, all the games are happening in Indiana. So it's like a bubble. So every single team is in Indianapolis. They're not allowed to go anywhere. We have basketball stadiums everywhere because like it's a religion. So it's like, you know, they know a lot about it. So we talk about the history, the numbers, and when we start talking about statistics, you know, we're building basketball goals, which I'm going to try to release that to you guys on my website. Hopefully tomorrow, my editor, my wife is reading it. So I'm hoping that's the case. Um, But do something you're passionate about. Like I love basketball. And even though the students don't all necessarily love basketball, which a lot of them do, the ones that don't, they still find it to be fun because it's something different than they're, that they're not used to, you know? And it's like catapults. Mm-hmm. I love that lesson. And you guys hear me talk about it a lot. And I know like that's one that's really popular on my website, but people are always like, what, why, do, why do you love this one? I'm like, I just love the fact that we can fling ping pong balls across the room. And there might be a student that doesn't love that, but they're okay with saying like, well, I can design mine. Mine can be the best designed one, or maybe I'm going to just try something new or different. And I think that's, that's, that's fun to me. Like doing something you're passionate about. Like I was telling one of the teachers the other day, like he loves fishing. I said, you should do a lesson all around like the ecosystem and fishing and then try to get the school to let you go fishing somewhere. I mean, it's probably a long shot this year, but in a normal year, you could do something like that. And I mean, I feel like you got to find something that you're like passionate about that you want to teach. That's going to make that time go by fast. And like right now, my week, this week has gone blazing fast. Like it's incredible how fast this went because I'm doing all lessons that I love. Like, I'm not going to teach anything this week that I don't love. And I know some people don't have that option, but that helps with burnout so much is being innovative. And, you know, maybe it stirs from a kid asking a question, like maybe a kid asks a question about weathering. If you're learning about weathering, for example, and you're like, well, let's go outside and monitor weather patterns this week, or let's go out and explore something in nature if it's nice where you're at. I think doing those things get you passionate again. What are some lessons that you kind of do that kind of make you passionate? Um, so during the springtime, when I was a classroom teacher, we would do a lot of science experiments, like save some of the more ones that you can go outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, cause it does help with cleanup. And then we did life cycles in third grade. So we actually had ladybugs one year. Ooh, nice. But, uh, fun fact, ladybugs have the same life cycle as a butterfly. They, I did not know that. No, they go through. That is a fun fact. Stages. And their caterpillar stage, it's not called a caterpillar, but their caterpillar stage looks like this little alligator thing. Um, If you saw a picture of them, you say, oh, that's a ladybug. You're like, I thought they were a gross little thing. Um, So we would do a lot of those types of experiments where we could go outside and explore um, and be collaborative that way. What I do love about the springtime is that the kids have built so many skills up to this point. So you can do a lot more multi-step type projects that are more Mm -hmm. student centered and involved. I'm doing 3d printing right now, K through five brand new lessons. I'm working on them. Same thing as Spencer. I'm working on them and I'll post them soon just to get all the kinks out, but Mm. they're so more involved. The kids have all these skills. They're proud of themselves. They're super into it. Would not do these lessons in August. (laughs) <laughs> right yeah so the that's, kids that's, have, are just really awesome I love kids at this time of year because they can do a lot yeah and that makes it fun too and like you know that you can try something a little bit maybe more that's out there too like that mm-hmm. I think for sure um my like last kind of one um kind of goes with one of Naomi's too and we kind of talked about that beforehand is just like maybe you start like a new club or maybe you want to maybe go to your principal and say like hey I'm feeling kind of burned out 
maybe you're going to start a new position. Maybe you want to start a new position. I know here at Southern Wells, I help sometimes people set up their STEM programs. Like I, I have a school that wants to come in and watch me here. Um, depending on like our COVID situation in a month, um, watch me teach. And then they're going to set up a program like mine. And I know there's teachers at their school that are like, Oh, I would love that position. Like I just need a change of pace. And I think that's perfectly valid. And I think that's part of teaching, you know, like my, I I'm saying this one, but like, really you should be because I've been a STEM teacher from day one of my teaching career. So, you know, when, when did you kind of know, like, man, I need to do a new position. Were you just feeling like down or was it just like, I just need something different? Yeah, I was in my sixth year of teaching and I loved my school. I really enjoyed my school a lot. Um, around my fourth year of teaching is when I really discovered STEM and technology and was getting interested, trying it with my students. And I saw the engagement in my kids. And just for those of you who are a classroom teacher, you deserve all the awards. I just was feeling really run down with all of the meetings. I had all the kids on IEPs, all the GT students, all the behavior students and hard parents. So it just really wore on me. Mm -hmm. um, I knew I was the right teacher for each of those students. I know I was supposed to be their teacher, but as a whole class, it was really challenging. And um, the moments that were really bright were like the STEM and technology based lessons. So, I mean, I, it took me a while to get uh, I was training for myself to be a better classroom teacher. And I was like, you know, I think I could teach all the kids in this school. I think I could be a STEM type teacher. So it was around this time. I really didn't want to leave the school I was at. I really liked it. Um, and there's some other factors too. So I did start applying uh, to STEM type positions in a different district, neighboring district. And uh, it was the right move because I want, I didn't want to quit teaching. I don't think it was that I just was worn down by the regular classroom stuff. So um, a change of pace can definitely help. I, this is my mm -hmm. third year in STEM. So it's, it, it was a right decision for me. Um, I'm really grateful for that classroom experience because it's helped me plan in different ways and understand where kids are coming from, where teachers are coming from. So um, yeah, definitely if you're thinking about um, trying something else, this is a great time um, to do that professional development, to train for possibly another position. So either apply right. or maybe start a master's right now. I started my master's this time last year. <laughs> and I mean, so. I feel like that that's a good point too. Cause like we were talking about, and this will kind of transition into what you, one of your like key topics were, but like, this is like a perfect time to try new stuff and like change up that environment. Even if it's like, you know, I'm sick of my room looking like we're doing the same math lesson over and over again. Well, maybe you do something different this week with it, or maybe you start a master's to prepare yourself for a different position. I think when we do those things, that's what kind of like when we shake up our day, sometimes that's what, you know, makes it fun and makes it different. And really, I think it's like one of those things that when you look back, you're like, wow, that made time go fast. It might not have been that different or it might've been very different, but it kind of made time go by fast with that. Yeah. And I'm the kind of person, I think you might be like this, you get bored easily. <laughs> so, so like people put stuff on my plate all the time here at school and I'm like, it's good they do. Cause otherwise I get bored yep. and then who knows where I'd wonder to like, I, who knows. And like, that's one of the things too. I tell people all the time. Cause they're like, well, how long are you going to be here? I'm like, I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, probably till I get bored would probably be the right answer. Like till I get bored and I want a new challenge. Like I kind of built this program here. So it's like my baby, but I wouldn't leave my baby until I knew I could create a new challenge or a new version of that. I'm the same way. I built this program as well. And I was lucky there was items in there, but it's totally from scratch. I'm excited for next school year. That's part of it too. I don't feel burned out right now at all, but I'm yeah. really excited for next school year to have it be semi-normal, I hope, and have like a full year of trying mm -hmm. everything. But definitely, um, especially if we get through state testing, try all the new things because your kids are very capable, like I said, and try the things that you've been unsure of because the kids are more, the kids are a little bored too. I mean, really think about it. They're bored. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and a lot of people this year are going back full person or hybrid right now. So that's really exciting for you. A lot of you are getting 
changes right now. Mm -hmm. And like, it seems like more and more like quicker. Like I know I'm in, like we're in person full Indiana's supposed to open up in the next couple of weeks. I don't know what that does for our school necessarily. I don't know if things will change there. Obviously those things are out of my hand, but it's just interesting to see where everything's going with each state and how that's looking and you know what that's going to look for like for us next year. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. And my boy, my boyfriend's school, they're going back a hundred percent for high school. So right. a lot of people are going to have like a back to school experience, which is really nice. I think, yeah. I know it's a lot. It'll but. be, <laughs> it'll be weird to do it at the end of the year like that. Like, Hey, welcome back to school. We're done here yeah. in like two months. <laughs> yes. But definitely like those days off, trying new things, doing something for yourself, learning more. Um, a lot of conferences are popping up. I'm presenting at One for Wonder Workshop in a few weeks um, that you guys, it's free. Um, so we could post that in there. Yeah. Um, so I'll be presenting in that little um, uh, professional development. So try new things, engage yourself, listen to audiobooks. That's a great way. Go on a walk. Just stay, just stay engaged and present. Don't tune it out. Just really dive in to what you're doing and trying those new things to stay engaged for yourself, but also for the students. It's easy to tune it out, but you can do this. Exactly. <laughs> and you can. <laughs> and I, like one thing I think I see too, and we didn't really like plan on talking about this, but like, I just kind of thought of it too in my head. Like there's teachers too, where I feel like their class is bad. Like it's like, it's taken a lot on them as a person and everything. And I know there's probably someone listening to this. So I always got to say like, don't, don't give up just because of that. You know, that's, you're a great teacher. You do your best every single day. You know, that class might be difficult, but that doesn't mean your next student star and every student is. Yeah. So don't, you know, hold that against students and don't give up on yourself because I know like we have great teachers here sometimes and they get a bad class and I'm always like you're doing a great job like I tell them that every day and they're like why do you say that I'm like good teach we got to have good teachers and teach and like they're teaching otherwise what's the point of being here you know we want the best people here we want that at every school so you can learn a lot from your hardest classes I yes for sure. <laughs> that's good I advice for sure understand there's always something you can learn um, and you might find it actually even more efficient ways to do things if you have a hard class. So right. you can, there's always good things to learn. Your classroom mm. management might be the best it's ever been. From that's that. true. That's good advice right there. That's, <laughs> that's, I, I like this conversation too, because like it's coming from a point where I'm, you know, I do all STEM and you've went from the classroom to STEM. And that's why I think makes it, you know, conversations like this fun. So, mm -hmm. you know, and like always, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. We love helping teachers. Yes. That's why we do what we do. And that's just, that's why we do what we do. So we loved making this episode for you guys today. And if you're interested in collaborating with us, want to do an interview, maybe marketing opportunity, or maybe you even want us to have us present at your school or some form of that, send us an email at innovative teacher podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you subscribe to your favorite plaque, your podcast, us obviously, on all your major platforms, right? And follow us on social media. We appreciate you listening today and we are looking forward to seeing you in the next episode.